me to own a gun or harder for me to take that where I need to be is actually just making my kids and I less safe. Well, Kimberly, first of all, obviously, uh, it, you know, your story is horrific. Uh, the strength you've shown in telling your story and uh, you know, you know, being here you know. tonight uh, is remarkable. Yeah, and all so right. All right, 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 right. really proud of you for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah right, 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 right. I, I just want to repeat that there's nothing that we've proposed that would make it harder for you to purchase a firearm. And now, and you may be referring to issues like concealed carry, but those tend to be state-by-state -state decisions. And we're not making any proposals with respect to what states are doing. They can make their own decisions there. But he didn't finish. Comma, right now. You know, the old uh, camel toe in the tent thing. No, no, no. We're not doing anything to impede your right to bear arms. Not at all. Then why are you doing it at all? Why is he doing it at all then? What's he doing it for? He admitted that it won't produce gun violence. It wouldn't save one life, so what's he doing it for? See? you got to look at that. Now, I don't like to talk about guns because it's a dead end. Most of my listeners don't own guns, frankly. You know, in the big cities, people tend not to own guns. They're afraid of them. And it's just a cultural thing. They may be conservative, but they're not gun owners. That's the absolute truth. Rural people are more the gun owners. Don't call and say you're a city person who went to Harvard and owns a gun. I know that's, that's not the point of my statement. Why? See, the big issue is not what he's uh, proposing. The issue is why would he do it at all? Why does he have to do that in January of 2016? You're not seeing the big picture if you don't ask yourself the big question. And I specialize in the big questions, and sometimes I hit the big answers. So let's do it again. Why would this deviant in the White House, again, I will define my terms, being a specialist in definitions, I call him a deviant because he is a political deviant. That is a statistical statement. He is a far, far, far left radical politically. He does not even represent the mainstream Democrat voter. In that sense, he is politically a deviant because he is statistically a deviant. So why does this political deviant, Barack Obama, choose to attack the Second Amendment in the last year of his reign of terror? What does he gain by doing this? What is in it for him? I think that's the pregnant question, by the way. He didn't have to do it. You know, he didn't have to do this. So those are some of the topics. And the phone number is 855-400-7282. We've got callers from around the nation. I prefer you to call if you haven't been heard from or from a station we haven't heard from in a long while. We have. I didn't know how many stations we have in this hour. You know, I, I only lose three or four stations in the third hour from some markets, but I have over 240 of them. So, God, if you're in an area of the country that we never hear from and you're afraid you'll never get on, this is your hour to shine on the Savage Nation. So uh, that's what we're going to do in this hour. Okay? John. John. I mean, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. Wayne on uh, line six of VLK Radio. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Dr. Savage. Uh, being a veteran, if someone says that the Muslim religion is not a religion of violence, please tell that to the people that shot at me and to where I gladly gave uh, for my country non-use of one of my arms. Um, you know, the thing I wanted to tell you is that during my rehabilitation, what got me through and really pushed me and helped me get my rehabilitation was you in preaching about self-reliance and, and self-responsibility and the topics that brought up that stirred anger from in my soul, which took away from me feeling sorry for myself. So um, I just... Well, I want to I I replay... Wait, I want to replay what you just said so I fully understand it. I want to I follow the psychology of what you said. You lost the use of one of your arms in combat against Muslims, okay? You then said that when you were in rehab, you say it anger was pouring through you, correct? Yes, sir. All right, well, that's... Uh, who wouldn't be angry? Who wouldn't be angry when you come back to a country run by a man like this and, and an entire political media structure uh, like this? It's enough to be very angry, but... You then said that the show helped you get over that anger, and I'd like to know how. By 
self-introspect and self-responsibility and self-integrity that you preach constantly when you're talking about whether it be drugs in America, as your topic was yesterday, or, 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 or anybody that has called as a liberal themselves always blaming someone else. It helped me to get out of my own self-pity party and realize the world mm. that I am a part of and proud to be a part of it is to me, even though I'm suffering a setback at this time. It's very interesting because every day, as old as I am, and I'm not as young as I once were, uh, was I have to wake up, and some days it gets bad for me, and I don't want to, I don't want to accept that what's going on in my life is a result of anything I did, or that I can, have the power to control it. Do you know that almost every day I have to really relive, I have to be reborn every day, and recreate myself uh, as a strong individual? It doesn't come with the territory. I don't wake up with that feeling in bed. I have to, I have to be reborn every day in that, in that reality. That's the truth, Wayne. If I start to feel this isn't going right or that's not going right, then I go down the whining path in my head. I say, wait a minute, stop it. You didn't get where you are by thinking that way. You got where you are by not thinking that way. Moreover, if you don't like what's happening, then change it. You have the power to change it. As long as you're breathing and you're walking, you have the power to change it. I have to tell that to myself every day, even now, Wayne. It's not, it's not a given every morning. Do you know that? Well, Dr. Savage, I want you to go to bed tonight knowing that whether what you do each morning to get yourself in that position has helped another human being, and I'm sure countless others that listen to your show as well. What city are you in, Wayne? Lexington, Kentucky, sir. Now, do you know other vets who have injuries from the war against uh, the individuals who don't practice Islam? Yes, sir. I, well, do you? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have six free books sent to you to give out to other veterans who are alone and suffering, just as a token of our appreciation from the Savage Nation. Six copies of Government Zero going out to you and your friends. Maybe it'll help you understand you're not alone. In your most lonely moments, you have to understand that you're actually the majority in this country. You're really not the minority. Although Obama makes you feel marginalized every day with your viewpoint, you are the majority, and you're the best of the majority. And I want to thank you for your service. It's all I can do is say thank you for calling the show as well, Wayne. God bless you, and thanks for serving America. Back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Like a man, talk like a man. That's how I was raised. My father wouldn't let me get weak. I mean, I don't often talk about it, but lately I have. As I get older, I hear his voice over and over again. He died in 1970. I was a young guy, but he never got to see my children. The thing is, I remember he wouldn't let me wimp out. I would like to, as some kids do, some don't. I had friends who were much tougher than me, obviously, really tough kids. They were my protectors, to be honest. Uh, and I wanted to wimp out of things. He wouldn't let me. He would just not let me. He would just basically grab me by the shoulders and tell me to straighten up and be a man. He didn't let me get weak, and he taught me that you have to stand up for yourself. And really, that's what it comes down to. You want to save this country? It's going to take every one of us standing up to the deviants on the far left who run the media, who run the government, who run the university universities. And I use the word deviant over and over today because I think I'm going to continue to use it. I'm not calling them liberals anymore. Because true liberals wouldn't be doing what they're doing. And I've been studying this situation for so long that I happen to know that liberals do not want to impinge upon the freedoms of others. Liberals don't stop others from speaking in universities. These are the far, far left deviants who have taken over every avenue of this culture of ours. The long march through all the institutions of America, have come to the head, come to a head with Barack Obama. Now, here's some headlines for the afternoon today. Investors Business Daily is reporting that Obama has failed to sway public opinion on gun control. Despite his Stalinist speeches and CNN uh, appearances and years and years of uh, legislative pushing, President O 
has failed to convince the public on key gun control positions he has advocated. According to the latest IBD, TIPP poll, I don't know what that means. I know what that means. I'm not going to read the numbers. But he's not winning. Everyone knows he's wrong on it. From the AP, U.S. condemns Israel expanding West Bank settlement block. Okay, we'll let that hang in the air. Two Austrians, one Swede, wounded in an attack at Egyptian resort. Two suspected militants. Well, it's the AP. You know what they mean by militants, don't you? The militants stabbed and wounded three foreign tourists. Well, you know what militants means, don't you? They can't use the I word or the M word. But you can pretty much be sure that the militants were not Christians. And so the militants of unknown religion, the militants of unknown uh, uh, affiliation with religion, stabbed and wounded three foreign tourists at a hotel in Egypt's Red Sea Resort of whatever. Now, why would the radical Islamists want to destroy Egypt's shaky tourist economy? Egypt is the largest Muslim country on the planet. Well, now there's your answer. Because although Obama and Kerry and McCain did everything they could to make sure the Muslim Brotherhood maintained power in Egypt, the Egyptian people threw the Muslim Brotherhood in jail and they restored the nation through a military coup that is not, not at all Islamist. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. was the voice of Germany during the heavy metal days. Now the voice of Germany is that of, well, something else. Something kinder and gentler, you would think. A group of potato-faced feminists who rule with iron high heels. You take a look at who's running Germany, the woman who runs the city where the rapes occurred. It's unbelievable to me how she apologized for the Muslims who raped the girls, saying the German girls should dress more conservatively. It's a shocker. You know, if anyone in America had ever said that in the 1960s during the height of the real feminist movement, what would have happened to them? Astounding how the world is changing in front of our eyes. And you have to ask yourself why. Well, here are some of the headlines from the beginning till now. They captured El Chapo after six months on the run. The number one drug leader in the Mexicas, Mexican, uh, the Mexican cartels, Mexican Marines caught him after a shootout. And here's a shocking, terrible, terribly shocking story. Facebook, Google, Twitter have shut down any criticism in Germany against refugees. You've heard me. The very same pirates who run these Internet enterprises, who still won't shut down ISIS recruitment in Syria or Iraq or the other hotbeds of Islamic terrorism have found the way to shut down anyone talking against Muslim refugees in Europe. My friends, fascism is fascism. It doesn't matter what form it comes in, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter how you sugarcoat it. North Korean nukes, just two days ago. You have forgotten about it already, right? Why would the American media forget the North Korean nuclear uh, explosion? Because it shows Obama's failures and weakness. A man who bullies the American middle class and kowtows to the real dictators on the earth. That's why. Obama is a classic bully. Phone number is 855-407-282. Pennsylvania cops shot repeatedly by a man who said he did it in the name of Islam, did it, did it for Allah, said he supports ISIS. And then the mayor of Philadelphia gets up there and says it has nothing to do with Islam. And now, are you ready for the follow-up to that? The sequel, if you think I'm just being an alarmist? Headline. Police in NYC and the U.S. on alert for more ISIS attacks after Philly shooting. So if you look at ISIS, it says Islamic State. It's not ISIS. It's not the Hindu state. It's not Jisis. It's not the Jewish state. It's not Bisis. It's not the Buddhist state. It is not, well, you get the picture. The Islamic State shootings, more of them, after Philly shooting. But wait a minute, if you're an NYPD cop, and you see a Muslim with a gun about to shoot you, you better call the ACLU first for permission to defend yourself because you just lost a lawsuit. And you certainly don't want to get on the wrong side 
of a feminist lawyer from the ACLU. A gunman claiming to have pledged